All right, so we're right back into another Dragon Ball Super Kart game video. This is the third of all of the slightly plain decks that I wanted to finish and I started, but I didn't want to not start or not finish. And this one features Goku Black. If you ever had a goal to do something in life or a deck or whatever, this is a, a direct representation of that. My goal for this deck is to basically just get out the SR Goku Black Rosé, either turn four or five, and then win the game after that. I feel like this the, the that this deck does do that pretty well, um, and I, I do want to give a shout out to the best worst player that I know, which is Adis, outside of Chuck, because that man has not given up on Goku Black, and I really wanted to put this one out there, so that way I can focus on some more off-the-wall and weird decks as well. Let's just get into it and take a look at it. If you didn't know, he is a pretty... I mean, I mean, if you don't know what Goku Black does already, I mean, I don't know what you're doing. It's weird, because when this card came out, the three drop in as well as all of the other uh, cards for Goku Black and Zamasu. Goku Black wasn't really talked about. I guess he's, he's just a little underwhelming compared to um, the old Zamasu, especially with the new Gawasu uh, uh, combo card, and then as well as the new Zamasu, which is slightly more competitive, if not much more competitive than this and anything else. And I think this one's more um, something to catch people off guard and as well as something to, to play in a more casual environment. I think it's a uh, it is something to consider and it's something to to toy with honestly. Anyway so Goku Black uh, his activate main is that if you have two or more energy you can crit a life or basic crit a life place into your energy area and then uh, you choose one energy uh, at the end of the turn and then you place basically pl place into the drop zone. The flip side is that two or less energy or two or less life you do get double strike and 5k so he's a 20,000 double striker and you draw a card when you swing. The whole point of this deck is that you ramp up pretty quick into the eight drop rosé over here, snipe three energy, play Gogeta and then win the game. Does it go like that every single time? I would say yes as long as you are um, making sure to keep that as a Goal whenever you do play against somebody. I think for pretty much every single matchup you can do that And then the other part of it is just to make sure that you are uh, playing defense and ramping up at the same time Which this does this deck does allow so going left to right you do see the or we do have the uh, Gawasu with the top three and it pretty much it searches all the important pieces uh, of the deck in early game you'll, you'll probably uh, run into or at least find something that you do need uh, early into the game. I wish this this deck did play more targets, but the fact that the uh, the super combos Hellas is uh, searchable by it, which uh, you know you're gonna get to four four or less energy. There's no other there's no other reason why you should be playing anything else. And if you have a deck card like Objection, you can always just pitch it for her. So she's searchable. The Joyful Strike at one, uh, which you do crit two life or take two life, inflict two damage, and then untap six. Is pretty good as well. Uh, you just, I mean, you can get around um, the new counter plays because this is a six cost and it is 25,000. Um, but uh, the, only, the really only thing you have to worry about is Cold Bloodlust, which doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much anymore being at one. So there you go. And then we have the Countdown to Destruction, which with five energy, which you get to pretty quickly, um, you get to play him for free and then draw a card. You just can't play him for the rest of the turn. And then the three cost, which is probably the most important card turn uh, turn one or turn two that you want in your hand uh, that Gawasu gets out or takes out of your deck uh, is very very important and of course the SR Beerus is um, at one two and this is actually done really well I would probably put one in the side if you are going to be playing best of three because it does well against anything triple attack triple strike like uh, uh, triple flash etc and it's just really good in general. And of course, the Time Disruptor, which really relegates uh, any kind of aggro deck. Yes, the best aggro deck right now is Universe 6 uh, Veggies, which I would say, um, instead of Group Leader Pilaf, consider Jacko the one that returns a card to their hand from their combo area. But other than that, there's not really not that much in blue specifically to actually combat combat that deck. So I would say play the Sensu Beans, play defense, and just don't die. <laughs> That's pretty much it for all the searchable targets. I don't think I missed anything, um, but the most important ones itself, Goku Black's uh, Time Disruptor, uh, Beerus, and as well as the Super Combos are all very, very important. Uh, if not, you can just charge them later on because as, as you go through the deck and as you draw more cards, uh, it's gonna be a little less likely that you do 
pick up one of those things. Anyway, moving on, Bulma saying farewell. This one is a one cost 5k in which you, if you combo this during your turn, uh, you get to return a three cost or less uh, uh, on their field and then return to the hand. The reason why I put this in there is because it is another stall tactic. It is something to delay um, uh, their plays. And if you pick the right target, as in anything that is, a, like I said, you reverse six veggies, um, you pick the right target and you return to the hand, they have to play it again and they have to go through the whole process. Yes, it is only three, three or less, but it does work when it needs to. I only played at one because you really only need it at one being a one cost 5k and it's not searchable by Gwasu or anything else so that's kind of annoying but you know kind of already explain the three three cost Goku Black the play here is that when you are at seven energy um, you are going to be playing this for free draw a card and then um, play the uh, the Goku uh, Black Rosé over here and then for the three new three drop if you haven't seen it already it does have barrier it literally is the first word in the description of the card text and people always try to choose it I don't know why it says barrier it's not, not very hard to watch out for that <laughs> um, but when you play the card you place the top card from your deck uh, into your energy and then you ramp up that way but with his effect what you really want to do is that turn two with two energy you either objection or you play him and then play him uh, right after and then uh, at the end of the turn you're ending with three energy and you're keeping that um, sometimes you do charge a beerus sometimes you do charge a black card or a hellas but those are very very easy to just choose with the uh, leader effect and then place into the drop the only thing that's a downside with this leader is that as you do ramp, you do kind of neg because you don't see that card again and you could charge something uh, very, very useful for yourself. So that's very annoying. Same thing with this card. And at the end, the, the opponent's turn, the next turn that you do play it, um, they charge a card. If it's a battle card that goes in rest mode and then if they uh, charge a rest mode card or a extra card, you draw a card. The only downside about this is that they do ramp with you. So if they if you don't remove their energy quick enough, um, they will get to, uh, you know, these these bombs in which will kill you. There's no easy way to put that. <laughs> if you if you're going against something like Shenron Gogeta or um, Frieza Prison, it is really good because the majority of the time it's going to be an extra card. Seven of the card, seven of the cards in their deck for Shenron or any Shenron leader is going to be a Dragon Ball, and it is hilarious uh, just to see it go right to drop and then you draw a card. Either way, we're moving on to the uh, Vegito. So of course, with five or more energy, which is usually when you do have five. Uh, five or more cards in your energy area, you're going to be playing this and then drawing. And then from there, you just use your Sense of Beans, uh, Dimension Magic, anything else to defend yourself while he's on the field. And that's pretty much it. He's just really good. Like, I, I wouldn't play the Deadly Defender because this this one does draw and he does have Barrier, just as a Deadly Defender. But he, since he is 20k, it does get around quite a lot. Um, so I would say definitely do that. Then we have the Ultimate Fusion Gogeta. He's actually been really clutch to remove anything, uh, two targets that is, and then draw two. I mean, it's just, there's not much to say about that. Already kind of explained that hero revives. Yes, Gogeta 7 is really annoying, but after you snipe their energy and they still have a big hand, you really need to take care of that. And, um, it has some synergy here as far as getting down to two. If you got three life and then you play hero revive, now you have a 20,000 double striker, triple, st triple striking go to three cars in hand uh, on board and then this man over here no energy call of duty you know the drill and then over here we have the uh, counterplay time disruptor it's self-explanatory like I was saying before Fu the Dark Manager or Fu the Dark Manager he has been a last minute addition who has been pretty good like you really don't take um, advantage of Overrealm as much, well at least this deck doesn't take advantage of Overrealm as much as you should. I feel like one of one of the Shrouded Mystery and Dark Manager has been pretty good. The issue with Overrealm and Black Cards in general, or adding more Black Cards, is that there's a highly, there's a, you raise a higher, <laughs> you raise a chance of charging a Black and it's not very fun. Um, the 3 drop here and as well as the leader effect uh, does both as far as RNG. And it's just not good. It doesn't feel good. You just want to scoop. So I would uh, avoid that and play the least as you can or the least that you can and reserve it as an alternative win con. So playing this man here and then playing this man, it's really not that big of a deal. And plus, if you play this man and somehow they survive the next turn, uh, Dark Banisher is always good as well. 
but most of the time it doesn't get to that. And then we have the Hellas, draw two, pitch one, or draw, pitch one, then draw two. It's kind of annoying, but oh well, it's really good. Drawing two is always better. I don't care what anybody says. Dimension Magic at four, self-explanatory. Just take a life to get down to two. Uh, just time it right. Planet of Destruction, which is probably one of the best cards for Goku Black and, and Zamasu. On defense, with Sensu Bean, um, you can go ahead and ramp on their turn. Three is probably the best number for it. Four, you kind of see it too early. Uh, and as you draw more cards through the leader effect, Gawasu, and as well as Time Disruption, uh, Disruptor, and, and the uh, three drop Goku Black, I mean, you can, you can it's just it's just better at three. I, I do not like it at four. Uh, Bean, four, more defense. There's no, there's no, what do you want me to say about that? <laughs> Mufuba, uh, because it's better in this format. I would say Mufuba is probably going to be one of those cards that you probably should, like if you're playing blue, you should consider it. Um, uh, before anything else because it, it will stop plays like the Dark Banisher. It will start plays like um, anything that uh, requires to be on the field. Like if they swing with the Vados and Champa, you just Mafuba it and now they have to pay for any everything in their hand. So there you go. Objection at three instead of four. Four is probably okay. I used to play it at that. Um, now I think it is just better at three. It is, like I said, it feels bad when you neg early into the game and you barely have a hand so reducing that chance and as well as uh, the variance of that is better and then two you're wide open it's just good like it's not as good as Nanala Hope because they have to play it um, they have to they get it back into their hand they have to play it again but the fact that they have to play it again and then that they you are um, delaying their four, turn four play or their four cost whatever it just becomes good in that respect then we have a mock sideboard all too easy is actually pretty good um, it is a pay one blue and then return a one cost to their hand I do believe and basically this is just against any other Shenron Go or any Gogeta matchup basically anything that's um, you're gonna need additional Negates basically. Betrayal of the Master is basically the Father Son Kamehameha, but for blue, it's actually a lot more useful than uh, people are leaving, leaving to be. Yes, it is just a blue version of it, but because you get to return something back to their hand, and especially if it's a big boy or a big girl like Kefla, it is very, very good. Then we have Group Leader Pilaf. Pretty good. I mean, really not that great against uh, K.O. Ken, but I, I would say. Um, if you have the chance to remove something big like triple strike or triple attack, it is very uh, important for that. I would highly recommend to remove critical or double strike or anything like that before you do triple attack or triple or, or double or dual attack. That is because they will just restand after this, uh, after the um, the counter phase. Uh, yes, that is a thing. And then the plan of destruction for just optional is just it just depends on the matchup. Like if you know it's gonna go for a while. Uh, you either side one in or you t you take them out like something against like uh, uh, Freeze a prison. Yes, it is there. It's gonna take a it's gonna either you're either gonna be using these on offense as in to ramp yourself when you guys are at um, uh, Seven energy total which will happen not only for this the, that matchup, but just in general uh, Or you just use it on defense if they ever do attack which I highly doubt if you're going against prison Extra Mufuba dark power mass in probably getting more and more relevant just like some uh, a few other cards that I was talking about before in these previous videos um, Just simply because of veggies and simply because of uh, pan making entrance for Janemba just cannot forget about Janemba <laughs> crisis crusher for anybody uh, using intensifying proud trunks or uh, Kidku and then a foo as eight on turn of Wincon. I feel like this should be the main instead of this, but I've been liking Dark Banisher before anything else, so I will keep it there. That's pretty much the 65, uh, well, 50 if you exclude the mock sideboard. Nothing crazy about this deck. It is very focused. It is, it, you know, it knows what it wants to do and it does it pretty good. I'm happy, I'm happy to hear any other suggestions or different versions of Goku Black. So definitely let me know in the comments below and subscribe if you're new. Let's get to the gameplay. All right, let's see what we got. So I'm going to mulligan here, keep the Gawasu SR and as well as the uh, Kai, simply because uh, going against Oolong, which ironically I just made a deck profile for, um, it's going to be pretty important. So that way any of his 5k uh, bodies aren't swinging at me, which he is going to swing at me right now <laughs> with the intensifying power trunks, which uh, I guess I called. There you go. Um, and he's swinging it for 20k, which is kind of annoying. If I waited for the Gowasu next turn, I guess it would have been not too bad. I can avoid that crit, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and swing at it right now or right into this next turn and be okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get to three energy, play out the uh, three drop, and then go to four. And now it's going to be um, his next turn with me at three energy after swinging at that. Four cards in hand, which is kind of a bummer. You really don't start drawing cards until uh, later into the game or mid game. Uh, I do go ahead and play the Kai just in case he has another Trunks or if he wants to swing with the King Piccolo. Obviously this is another triple flash deck. I already showed how important it can be when it comes down to the, uh, or how pretty good uh, the Oolong can be, but you know. Went ahead and reminded him to top, top deck the energy. It is annoying that I didn't see a Dragon Ball instead, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Um, I really wanted to use the leader ability, so I went ahead and did that. Uh, if I swung here and then used Plan of Destruction, I probably could have got to 7 energy a lot quicker. Um, but I, I mean, not swung. Yeah, 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 swung here and then do that. I, it would have been a little bit better. So I think what I'm going to do is probably combo out of this. I don't remember don't remember this, but I think I took it. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. I had a plan. I had a plan. Okay. So right now I'm at, uh, what is that, 6 energy. Not too bad so far. At the very least, uh, I'm gonna get down to four on uh, the Hellas combo, which is annoying. It's uh, <laughs> annoying. <laughs> now I get to charge this, and if you didn't know, the uh, effect does go into the next turn, basically, uh, in which I have to pitch a pitch a uh, a card for it, or a, an energy for it. That is. Uh, I completely forgot that I had the French version of the Koku Black here. I did it. Wouldn't had wouldn't had him um, pay the seven because I'm at eight energy, and went ahead and placed the English one. What am I doing with my life? I'm swinging with the Guasu at the same time. What am I doing? Uh, this man forgot that I had barrier. I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, I think Untap just turned that over for me. I went ahead and pitched out the Hellas. So now he's at two energy. I'm at eight. Life is good. Well, seven after pitching that. The man is not awakened yet, which is just great. Feels good. The only downside to Oolong is that if you do not uh, start your stuff early, it's going to be a little detrimental. He's gonna go ahead and awaken here because he does have seven in the drop. Went ahead and checked it. He's gonna go ahead and swing. Probably gonna go ahead and take it here. And I think the next turn I'm gonna go ahead and play the Vegito because it's just more value there. Charge that and then play it at. I think I'm trying to put him down a little bit. I think I was, I was trying to put him down to uh, uh, three. So swing in here. I'm still at single strike. Oh, yes. Make him take whatever I can make him take. And then play Gogeta. Very interactive card, I know. Another Hellas. I've seen all of them. Feels pretty good. So go for 25, he has to either combo out of this or not. I do believe he uses Final Guardian and I swing with the Gogeta. I do believe that is game. So as you can see, get to 8 energy, easy as possible. The real question is, do I think this is going to be meta defining or format defining, anything like that? Just like Oolong, just like Domigra? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think these are ideas that you need to consider as far as the format. The format is very wide and uh, vast right now. People are trying to figure out what's going on and what to play and etc. And I always come back to play whatever you uh, are comfortable with. And I, I love, I do love Goku Black. I do love this archetype, and I didn't want to let it go before not putting on the channel for this set because he he got so much good support. And as you can see, it is very playable. Like I, I played out the eight eight drop as soon as I said, uh, or as soon as I could, and I, it worked out. So definitely let me know what you think as far as this deck goes. Any other deck that you're trying to build, comment below. Like, dislike, subscribe if you are new. I'll see you in the next one. Later.